Ready? Yep. <clears throat> I'm Rob Morris. I co-founded an organization called Love 146. We prevent child trafficking and we care for survivors. Can you tell us her story? Well, we don't know her story and it's not ours to tell. But each of us knows our own story. That's what we can tell. In 2002, some friends and I connected with an organization that was actively working to combat child trafficking. They invited us to accompany them on an investigation in a Southeast Asian country. Actually, it really wasn't our place, but not understanding that at the time, we went undercover with them into a brothel where they suspected children were being exploited. I stood there looking through a glass wall, and on the other side, there were these young girls wearing red dresses. Even the dignity of their names had been stripped away. Instead, each girl had a number pinned to her dress. Menus were being handed out with prices for different acts listing each girl by number. The children sat so still. They were all watching cartoons on crackling little television sets, all except for one girl. She was staring in our direction with this piercing gaze. In my heart, I hoped it was defiance. I thought I was gonna see the issue of human trafficking that night. Instead, I saw a person, and I'll never forget her face. That look, I'll never forget the number she wore. It was 146. What happened after that trip? Well, we came home and we were like, okay, now we're compelled to do something. So we founded Love 146 with this audacious vision, the end of child trafficking and exploitation, nothing less. The statistics surrounding child sex trafficking and exploitation are staggering. It's happening in my neighborhood, it's happening in my city, it's not just happening in brothels in Southeast this Asia. This gut wrench inside of me, this is not the way it's supposed to be. Children need um, credible places that are doing effective work where they can begin their long journey of recovery. Everywhere we told this story, people came alongside of us and did whatever they could to help. I tell you about a cause that we love, Love 146. They're people amazing, of all different and backgrounds really and perspectives came together around this shared value that no child should be trafficked. Because so many people believed in this vision, we were able to hire experts in things like childhood trauma, public health, social work, education and employment, and we began to reach kids. Now, decades later, Love 146 has reached thousands of children around the world. In our survival care program, we journey with young people down the long road of recovery, helping them regain their hope and reimagine their future. We seek a holistic approach to survivor care by addressing children's physical, mental, and emotional well-being. And we help them develop healthy ways of coping with trauma. We're with them every step of the way as they navigate complicated systems and testify against their traffickers. We work with them towards financial independence through employment and higher education so they never need to depend on people who would exploit them. We're there at their low points to remind them that what happened isn't their fault. And we're there to celebrate their important moments and tell them we'll always believe in them. We build trust by showing up for children again and again and again, committing to be in their lives for as long as they want us to be, as long as they need us. We say to youth something that they've probably never heard from a service provider. We never close a case. We'll go where you go and we always will be there for you. You can reach back out to us for the rest of your life. After caring for survivors for years, we began to see that if we're really going to end child trafficking, we had to do something more than just respond after the exploitation already happened. We had to stop this from happening in the first place. And that's when we began our prevention work. We tend to remember. Yeah, we tend to remember and keep that with us yeah. when people label us or say hurtful things to us. We started by educating youth and creating resources for parents. And then we began educating professionals working with kids so that they know how to respond when youth disclose abuse or come to them for help. 
Eventually, we developed a prevention education curriculum that helps children understand ways that they're vulnerable and what trafficking actually looks like. Love 146, an international human rights organization, led this community-based training, teaching methods for better response to youth, including children you may know who may end up in unfortunate situations. We focus on skill building, helping youth develop muscle memory so that they can recognize an unsafe situation and know how to respond. Traffickers are often people that children know, whether it's a friend, romantic partner, or a family member. So we help you think through what's manipulation and abuse versus a healthy relationship and authentic love. You mentioned love. Can you tell us about that word in your organization's name? Yeah, we don't take that word lightly. We believe love takes action, and it can look a lot of ways. Love looks like a young supporter who gives up her birthday presents to raise money for other children that she's never even met. A social worker answering a child's call after a bad day. Like one of the survivors in our care, introducing us to his friend who needs help. Love looks like challenging society to do a better job addressing the problems that make children vulnerable. These kids are being exploited. And when we label them as running away, we abdicate the government's responsibility to make sure that these children are safe. And what happened to her, the girl who wore 146? Honestly, I don't know. And that's really weighty. Um, because there wasn't enough evidence to warrant um, a recovery operation by local law enforcement and the investigation was not complete, uh, we had to leave there that night. When enough evidence was eventually collected, the brothel was raided, but by then the girl who wore 146 was gone. But now I know that there's so much more complexity to trafficking than what we saw that night or what you see in the movies. There are a lot of ways for a child to get out of exploitation. A rescue operation isn't the only way to freedom. And so we still have hope that she and the other children there that night have found a way out. You know, that night changed something in me. Ever since it's challenged me to not look away, to see the person in the midst of the overwhelming issue, the human in human trafficking. Are we any closer to ending child trafficking? Well, you know, I guess you could feel like this problem is insurmountable, but you could have felt that way about a lot of problems decades ago. And since that night, so much has changed. <laughs> since then, every state in the U.S. has passed legislation addressing human trafficking. There are now global standards in place in combating trafficking and caring for survivors. We're not just meeting children's needs and seeing them heal, but now we're sharing our research with others doing this work. There are more services for survivors than ever before. Not only are we proactively helping youth stay safe, but youth are looking out for each other and telling their friends about trafficking. Yeah, I believe that we are getting closer to ending it. We're getting closer actually every day. We believe the world should be safe for children, and we insist that it's possible. And it's possible with a collective movement and persistent action. When enough of us refuse to tolerate a child being exploited, we'll make the end of child trafficking more than a possibility, but a reality. And that's when we'll see it, a generation free from trafficking.